Today, I'm going to rank every single date idea that I can think of. Hopefully, this helps those of you that are unsure about what to do for a first date and also those of you that are already in a relationship but have run out of ideas because it's always good to spice things up. Now, the truth of the matter is all date ideas can be good. It really depends on what you and your date enjoy, but it wouldn't be a tier list video if I didn't have some sort of ranking system. So the four things I'm going to use to rank each of these date ideas today are number one, how casual is it? This refers to how much effort is needed to set up and go on such a date. Casual dates are usually better for first and second dates as they are a lower time commitment and seem more natural, which makes your date feel more comfortable. Number two, how much rapport can be built on such a date. This means how much talking, eye contact, and light touching will naturally occur. This is crucial for furthering any romantic relationship. Number three, how fun is it? How likely will you and your date laugh and smile? Because of course you want your date to look back on this day with fond memories. And finally, number four, how flexible is it? Meaning, does it allow you to do other stuff before or after the date? Because the more things you do with someone, the more rapport is built. With that being said, let's jump right in. So we'll start off with one of the most common date ideas, going to the movies. It's super casual, doesn't require much planning. It's flexible because you can do something before and after. But the problem is you can't really talk or even look at each other during a movie. So it's very hard to build any rapport, which is especially important early on in a relationship. You can do movies later on, but definitely not for a first or second date. So I'm going to put it into the B tier. Next on the list is one of my old favorites, which is the park. I used to bring all my dates to a park back when I was living in New York City, and that's because it's very casual with tons of flexibility, right? You can grab a bite nearby and walk around while talking. And depending on what's in the park, you can do a bunch of different stuff, like play on the swings or sit somewhere and enjoy a nice view. There's a lot of opportunities to build rapport while doing these things, but it really depends on what park you bring them to. So overall, I'd give this an A. Next up on our list is grabbing a meal together. Personally, I prefer to grab a meal before I do another activity, like a walk in the park. But it's perfectly fine to just do lunch or dinner if it's a first or second date. It gives you time to get to know the person, and it's also a low-time commitment thing, so it comes off as very casual. Now, it's definitely built into us to feel closer to people that we share meals with, so you can build a good amount of rapport, but it really depends on your conversation skills. So overall, I would rank this as a low A-tier idea, as it's usually not that fun or memorable. On the other hand, you have going for street food. I would actually rank this higher than just grabbing dinner because getting street food usually means that you're walking around a night market or some sort of street fair where there's tons of different food and things to do, which makes the experience much more fun. I would rank this as a high A tier because as all the benefits of sharing a meal while having a lot more activities that you can do together, but only if you can find a good spot. Next up on our list is going to a museum or an exhibit. This is a date idea that's great for deep thinkers. Now, personally, I don't think this is a good first date activity unless you know for sure that your date is interested in this type of stuff because some people might find the entire experience boring. If, however, you and your date love talking about deep ideas and admiring art or history, then it's definitely something that could work. It's also pretty casual and flexible, so overall, I'll give it a high B. Next up, we got going for a drink at a bar. Now, this is one of the most common dates you'll see in young adults. I know some of you look down on the idea of getting intoxicated with someone else, but in many places around the world, it's part of the culture, so it comes off as a very casual date. Now, alcohol lowers inhibitions, so it'll make both of you less anxious. This often leads to more playful touching and flirting, but you gotta make sure that you and your date are pacing yourself. Don't binge drink because you don't want to be put in a situation where you or your date get too drunk. One to three drinks for the night is ideal. Now, personally, I would rank this in the mid A tier as it's a perfectly fun date idea at any point of a relationship, but only if you and your partner are open to social drinking. Next up, we have grabbing a coffee or tea, which is the classic 15-minute date. This is by far the most casual of all date ideas, and it's best used for a first date. Its purpose is to see if there's any chemistry at all. Now, this type of date is not fun later on in a relationship because at that point, it's not really even a date. I'm putting this into the low A tier because it's something that you can use early on in any relationship. It's the most casual of all dates, and it's a very flexible date idea that allows you to transition into something else later on in the day if there is chemistry. Next up, we got pottery or some sort of crafting activity where you and your partner go somewhere and make something together. This is quite the time investment because it can take a few hours to make whatever it is that you're trying to make. 
And you also have to be quite focused on what's happening in front of you. Now, there is some room to build rapport. You can joke around about whose cup looks better. But for the most part, you'll be focused on what's happening in front of you. Overall, I'd give this a mid B tier. It's a decent date idea, but only later on in a relationship. There is the added bonus of creating something together that will remind you of the date. I once made a bowl with my girlfriend and we still use it to this day. And every time we eat from that bowl, it brings back some fond memories. Similarly, we have the cooking class date, which is something that I've gone on multiple times. It's basically the same as a crafting date. Personally, I like this more because I like to compete with my girlfriend to see who's the better chef. But overall, everything is about the same. So I'm giving it a slightly higher B tier right above crafting. Next up, we have ice skating. This is a somewhat casual date idea that's great at building rapport because most people are not great at skating, which means there's the potential for a lot of light touching if you or your partner is a newbie. You can hold their hand to steady their balance. You can stay by them as a safeguard if they're about to fall, stuff like that. And usually you'll find skating rings in or near malls, which gives the added flexibility of doing something before or after the date. So overall, I'm going to rank this as a mid A tier. It's not something that you'd usually do for a first date, as it is a sort of mental commitment, especially if they've never done it before. But it is pretty good for a second date onwards, in my opinion, as it can lead to a very fun and memorable experience. Next up, we got going to a sports event. This is similar to going to the movies as your focus is on the event in front of you. But there is this added bonus of feeling the energy of the crowd, which does not happen at the movies. This does make it more fun, but only if you and your date are both fans of the sport. This date is a pretty big time commitment, so overall, I'm going to rank it as a B-tier idea. It's slightly higher than movies because you can build more rapport, and it's also a more memorable experience. Now, before we rank the next date idea, I'd like to give a quick shout out to the sponsors of today's video, Audible. I've been using Audible for years now. In fact, I really don't read physical books anymore, and that's because I find listening to audiobooks to be far more effective. Using Audible has allowed me to learn life-changing things on the go while I'm doing my grocery shopping, commuting somewhere, or doing my daily chores. It's far more convenient than having to bring a physical book with me wherever I go. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog. This includes almost all of the latest bestsellers and new releases for all genres, including memoirs, motivational, educational, business, philosophy, and much more. Members will also gain full access to a growing selection of Audible originals, podcasts, and more. Go to audible.com forward slash improvement pill or text improvement pill to 500, 500 to get access to Audible for 30 days free today. Now back to the topic at hand, we got the zoo which is basically the same as going to the park, but there's usually more stuff to do at zoos. But it does feel slightly less casual than the park. Maybe it's the fact that you have to pay to go in or because you have to wait on lines. But overall, it's still a great spot in my opinion, so I'm giving it a slightly lower ranking than the park. Next up, we got the mall, which is by far the most flexible of all date ideas. There's food, arcades, bowling alleys, sometimes even skating rings and movie theaters. Going to the mall is extremely casual because people hang out in the mall all the time. This plus the unmatched flexibility makes it, in my opinion, one of the best spots for a first date or any date in general, which is why it deserves a spot in the S tier. Then we got going to the spa or getting a massage together. This is something that you should probably only do much later on in a relationship as it can be a pretty big time commitment and you can't really talk or even look at each other when you're getting massages. So there's not much rapport that can be built. So overall, I'm going to have to put this in the low B tier. Next up, we got a couple's dance class. Now, this is a pretty big jump outside of one's comfort zone, so it's something you should save for much later on in a relationship. But if you do go on this date, it is by far one of the most rapport-building dates out there because you and your partner literally have to be in sync in body and mind in order to execute the moves properly. So overall, I'd give this a low A tier because it can only be done when you're already very comfortable with each other. Then we got karaoke. Now, this is a pretty fun date idea. You have the option to get drinks, which can lead to a wild night, or you can do it sober. But either way, doing karaoke usually requires a fair amount of rapport to have already been built. Most people feel shy singing in front of others, so it's definitely not something you do for a first date. But later on, maybe for a third or fourth date, it's a great idea. It also depends on the culture. There are some countries where it's perfectly normal to do karaoke and others where it's much more rare. So I'm giving it a low A tier ranking as it's quite niche. 
Then we got the beach. Now, this is a pretty big commitment depending on how far away the beach is and also the fact that you have to bring a bunch of stuff like a change of clothes, towels, and sunscreen. Personally, I don't find going to the beach fun if it's a one-on-one date. It's usually more fun for me when there's a larger group of people, so I'm giving it a high B tier as it's a bit harder to pull off and definitely not for a first date unless you literally live next to a beach or if there's something like an amusement park next to it that you can go to. Which brings us to the amusement park. Now, this is by far one of my favorite date ideas these days. It is a pretty big time commitment, so you shouldn't really use it for a first date, but it scores high in all three of the other aspects. It's extremely fun with tons of flexibility because there's endless things to do, and there's plenty of time to talk while you wait for rides or eat. And even though it's usually a huge time commitment, it does come off as extremely casual and playful because it's essentially a giant playground. So this is definitely going into the S tier for me. On the other hand, you have the water park, which is basically an amusement park, but with water. So it has all the benefits of the amusement park, but it's an even bigger commitment mentally because you have to wear more revealing clothes, which a lot of people would not be comfortable with early on in a relationship. So it's definitely not something you do for a first date. But overall, I put it in the high A tier. It's loads of fun, but maybe only from the third date onwards. Then we got the escape room, which is basically where you're put in a room and have to solve puzzles to get out. It's only a one hour commitment and it's usually located in a mall, so there's tons of flexibility. But it's an acquired taste. Some people enjoy it, others don't. Personally, I love going to these even outside of dating. Like if I'm hanging out with someone for the first time, I usually ask them to do an escape room with me. When you're doing one, you're forced to work as a team to overcome obstacles. So it's amazing at building rapport. It's also very memorable because you're put in a high stakes environment that's totally different than anything you'd normally experience in real life. So overall, I'd give this a high A tier. Next, we got bowling. I think this is the most casual of the sports-related dates, right? It's fairly easy to learn, and unlike other sports, you don't constantly have to move, so there's a ton of time to talk. There's even room for some friendly competition, so you can actually build a good amount of rapport easily. On top of that, there's usually food and drinks, so you can share a meal, which is always a plus. It's also not much of a time commitment, and it's pretty flexible depending on where the bowling alley is located. So overall, I'd give this a middle A tier. Then we have the arcade, which is one of my favorite date spots. It's actually where I took my girlfriend for our first date. It's very casual and comes off as very playful, and it's almost always in or near a mall nowadays, so there's tons of flexibility. There are tons of games you can play, which can also lead to some friendly competition. And if it's one of those arcades that gives you tickets, you can even win a prize that gives you a memorable little stuffed animal or something along those lines. This is the perfect date at any point in a relationship, so in my eyes, it deserves a high spot in the S tier. Next up is rock climbing. Now, this is definitely not something you should do for a first date unless you and your date both happen to love it. I'm saying this because it's quite the workout. Every time I go rock climbing, I end up being covered in sweat with extremely sore forearms. So it's quite the ask for a first date. There also isn't much time for building rapport as you're mostly focused on the wall in front of you. So overall, I'm putting this in the mid B tier. Then we got clubbing. Now, personally, I love going to the club, but it's one of those things that only certain people like. Usually those who enjoy crowds, drinking socially, or dancing. If your date isn't really into any of that, then there are better options out there. But if they are, then it's one of the funnest ways to end the night. There's tons of flexibility because you can do a bunch of stuff before going to the club, like grabbing dinner together. When you're at the club, there's tons of rapport you can build, tons of light touching that occurs from dancing together. Overall, it's not great for a first date, but from the second date onwards, it can be quite fun. So I'm putting it in the A tier. The same goes for a party. We're talking about something like a house party. Now, the main difference between this and clubbing is that people at house parties usually know each other. So it requires even more of a mental commitment from your date to want to go with you, assuming they don't know anyone there. So it's something you shouldn't do until much later on in a relationship, which is why I'm putting it in the low A tier. And then we got going to a comedy show or some sort of live show, which is sort of like a movie, but a bit less casual, but also a bit more memorable, especially if the comedian points you out and makes fun of you as a couple. Overall, I think this is better saved for later on in the relationship where you don't have to talk as much, but can enjoy some laughs together. I'd actually rank this slightly lower than the movies because it's less casual and a bit more of an acquired taste. Next up, we got a couple's painting class. Now, in my eyes, this is basically the same as crafting as you're focused on what's happening in front of you, and you end up with a piece of art that you can hang up on your wall for the memories. Although, I'll place it slightly higher than crafting because it's usually less of a time commitment. Then we got an interesting one, which is inviting them over. 
This is incredibly hard to pull off for a first date because it requires a lot of trust. But from the second date onward, it's definitely doable. Now, whenever you bring someone over, you're sharing the intimate part of your life with them. You're showing them what type of person you are. So it's very memorable and it builds a ton of rapport. There's also a ton of flexibility depending on what you decide to do in the house. You could cook a meal together, play games together, or even Netflix and chill. So overall, I place this in the low S tier because it's one of the most intimate dates, but it usually requires several dates before your partner is comfortable doing this. Then we got canoeing or kayaking or any other water sport like this. This is a pretty big commitment. Some people get seasick or are scared of water because they can't swim, so it's really not for everyone. If, however, they happen to love water sports, then it can be great. You get to sightsee while having plenty of time talking to each other when you're on water. But because it's so niche, I'm putting it into the high B tier. And then we got camping or going on a road trip. Both of these are huge time commitments that require a lot of trust, so they're only viable much later on in a relationship. If you do go, it can be quite fun, but you have to make sure you plan ahead and bring a ton of things to do. It's very memorable and great at building rapport because you're basically surviving together. So I'm placing it in the low A tier because it's such a huge commitment. Then we got laser tag. This is something that I love doing. It's a lot of fun, but it's a pretty big ask for a first date. You're basically running around nonstop for 15 minutes, and most people are simply not trying to get sweaty on a first date. The great thing is that these are usually located in malls, so there's a ton of flexibility, and it's memorable because it's you and your partner against the world. But again, it's not that great for a first date, so I'm putting it in the low A tier. Then we got three date ideas that are all very similar. Watching a sunset, hanging out on a rooftop, and stargazing. All three of these are great ways to end a date, but they shouldn't be the only thing that you do on a date. They're more like a cherry on top. So I'm placing them all in the B tier if they are the only thing that you do. But if you stack them with anything else on this list, then they would jump up to a higher tier. Next up, we got a random tour in a city. This is only fun if either one of you is not a local because, well, locals don't really get excited going to well-known tour sites in their own city. Overall, this is a decent date idea because it's pretty flexible and it gives you a ton of time to build rapport. But because it's usually such a big time commitment, I'm putting it in the high B tier. Then we got doing a puzzle together. This is a very casual date idea that usually occurs at someone's house, so it requires that level of rapport to pull off. It's very casual but kind of boring, so it's definitely something for later on in a relationship when you've run out of stuff to do together. It does give you something nice that you can hang up on the wall, though, but I'm still going to have to place this into the low B tier. And then we have going to a concert or rave. Now, this is a popular thing to do as a couple nowadays, but usually much later on in a relationship because you can't really talk at a concert or rave, but you can dance together. It's also not for everyone because you have to enjoy large crowds. Although there is this magical feeling of being one with the crowd that usually occurs, which is nice. Overall, if you're both into a certain type of music, it can be fun. So I'm putting it in the low A tier because although it's niche, it is quite common for people to like stuff like this. Next up, we got biking. This is a somewhat casual thing you can do. You both rent some bikes and bike around the city. This allows you to be pretty flexible because you can visit multiple spots and do different things like eat or sightsee. If you plan out a few locations to go to, then this can be quite the enjoyable date. So I'm putting it in the mid A tier. Then we have a trampoline park. For those of you that don't know what this is, basically it's a giant facility filled with trampolines that you jump up and down on. It's sort of fun. You can do backflips and jump into foam pits. You also have plenty of time to build rapport and talk as you explore the different parts of the park. I usually see these in malls, which is great for flexibility. Now, I wouldn't do this for a first date, but from the second date onwards, it does seem all right. So overall, I'd put it in the low A tier. Next up, we got hiking. This is enjoyable if you and your partner like nature, but it does require a fair amount of trust because you're going into the wilderness together. It's also quite the time commitment, so it's not something I would do early on in a relationship. So overall, I'm putting it in the high B tier. Then we got something interesting, which is sleeping over in a unique place where you book a strange Airbnb, a haunted apartment, or something along those lines. Of course, since you're sleeping together, it's not something you can do early on in a relationship, but it can lead to very memorable experiences and loads of fun depending on how interesting the place is. Because it can be hard to find a worthwhile spot, I'm putting it into the B tier. Then we have volunteering, where you work together to help others out. 
It's filled with good vibes, but it's not something I would do early on in a relationship because it's quite the time commitment and the focus is on others and not you and your partner. But it is a nice way to spend the day if the two of you enjoy helping others out. Overall, I'm putting this into the low B tier as it is a very niche idea. And finally, we have mini golf, which is a fun, casual date idea, not a huge time commitment, and depending on where it's located, it can be quite flexible. There's a ton of time to chat while playing, which is great for rapport, so this can be a good choice for a first or second date, which is why I'm putting it into the A tier. And that's it. We just went over 40 different date ideas. I know some of you may not agree with my rankings, but hopefully this video served its purpose by giving you a huge list of things you can do for dates in general. If you ever do go on any of these dates, let me know how it goes in the comments down below. Besides that, guys, stay tuned.